uh, Pacoima. Actually, it's Arlita now, Arlita. Uh, Freva, can you repeat? Approaching the 405, Devonshire and Sepulveda. Getting onto the 405 freeway, guys. Okay. And uh, News Chopper 4 is actually the only news helicopter that is over this pursuit of a stolen vehicle. It is the LAPD's Foothill Division that initiated the pursuit. It's only been going on for about the last three minutes. It started near Paxton and Laurel Canyon in Pacoima and then made its way down to Sepulveda and Devonshire where the suspect hopped on the 405 freeway and is, and is now traveling northbound on the 405 freeway at approximately 75 miles an hour. A stolen vehicle, a Dodge Ram. Colleen, at this point, it's unclear. Uh, we first heard about the pursuit when it became a following uh, in Pacoima, and we did hear that officers were following the suspect vehicle. They attempted to uh, stop the suspect, but of course he took off, so that's when the pursuit ensued. So th they are yet to determine exactly how many people may be on board, but of course we know that there is at least one person. They are describing it as a male, as uh, he continues here northbound on the 405 freeway. Going to be coming up to the 5 freeway here in just a moment, so he, uh, he will be forced to continue on the 5 north unless he exits before then. Yes, yeah, straddling the lanes there, and we actually saw him uh, driving very erratically when he was on surface streets. Uh, we did see that he was going at a very high rate compared to the traffic, and now that he's on the freeway, he's still running relatively fast compared to some of the other vehicles. Uh, by comparison, you can see that those other cars are going approximately 65 miles an hour. He's running at about 75 miles an hour at this point, really using every lane that he needs to to get by. Uh, but again, this is a stolen foothill division uh, close behind. Yeah, um, could I have a uh, Santiago? Okay. Hey, Chuck, yeah, I can hear you there just uh, doing some housekeeping up here in use chopper for Alpha.
Hey, Chuck and Colleen, we're back with you here as the suspect vehicle continues on the southbound 5 now. So he was in that northbound 405. He did exit and is now southbound on the 5 freeway. So this is going to put him in the uh, San Fernando area. And if he continues southbound in this direction, it will get him back into the area where this pursuit began in Pacoima, very close to Paxton at Laurel Canyon. It was where we first heard about this when it was yet a pursuit. It was still a follow at that point of a stolen vehicle suspect in this pickup truck. And we do have, again, LAPD's Foothill Division close behind. I'm yet to hear whether or not they are requesting CHP to take over, considering that this pursuit is now on the freeway. But for now, LAPD close behind this stolen vehicle suspect, and he may be transitioning here to the 118 freeway. I'm sorry, Colleen, I missed your question, but essentially he's a right at the 5 and the 118 freeway. It does appear that he is going to be going on that 118 freeway. He's on the transition right now, and I'll be able to tell you exactly what direction he's going here in a moment as he completes uh, the off-ramp here. But he is. Uh, it, it does appear that he's going to be going eastbound on the 118 freeway, coming away from the 5. I'm closely monitoring the police scanner truck to get some of those details, but at this point, it doesn't appear that LAPD really knows who this guy is. Again, this is a stolen vehicle suspect, so if they were to run the plates on the car, of course, the information that they get is going to come back to the rightful owner, the registered person. So at this point, they, ha they have very little to go by as to who this individual may be. Of course, they, they know uh, where the pursuit began. They know that they tried to pull him over, and he chose to continue on and every now and then I can actually see inside and see that individual and you see him there it does appear that he's wearing some type of long sleeve shirt but other than that I can't really make out any other details about this person and there does appear to be some objects there in the back of the truck uh, perhaps some sort of gardening equipment but as far as we know that is the only information that LAPD has on this suspect as he continues here on the eastbound Colleen, as you mentioned before, we have a lot of hills here in the area, so sometimes our signal comes and goes, but we're still over this pursuit here. He, when he was on the 118, he actually transitioned onto the 210 East, so that is where he's at now, 210 East, and he is apparently going to exit Foothill here, so we'll see what way he goes once he comes to the off-ramp here of Foothill and the 210 Freeway. It does appear that he's going to make a right-hand turn there on to Foothill, and so this would make him uh, west bound foothill coming away from the 210 freeway. Yeah, absolutely. This is a this is a foothill division or foothill street rather uh, through this area is always wide open and really not much traffic. But the only problem here with a uh, perhaps trying a pit maneuver would be that he's simply going a little bit too fast. He's still approximately 60 miles an hour here on Foothill Division as he uh, passes Osborne Street. And he's also very close to LAPD's Foothill Division. So if they uh, were thinking about uh, getting some spike strips out here, they have plenty of units uh, close by that are Yeah, they very well put, could put units out ahead of him, and I actually have seen some units in the area as he comes up to Van Nuys Boulevard here, running through that red light, continuing here on Foothill at approximately 65 miles an hour. And you see the night sun there from the airship overhead. Some of the units are giving him a little breathing room, letting him uh, slow down a little bit, letting him think that perhaps he's not being pursued. But of course, that airship staying up, up above right over this pursuit the entire time.
that is an excellent point, Colleen. With a, with a regular squad car, they it may not have the force to perform that pit maneuver on that vehicle. They could very well try it with an SUV, possibly. But even then, it, it's it's questionable just because of the size. But that is an excellent point. So that's something they're going to consider, as well as, as the speeds, of course. And uh, for the most part, again, these streets aren't too busy. Uh, so they very well could put some strike some spike strips rather up ahead in front of this suspect but again this is a stolen vehicle suspect a pursuit that started at around 11 o'clock near Paxton and Laurel Canyon in Pacoima and is now back in the city of Pacoima And there's one of those units that we were wondering whether or not they were going to put units up ahead. And sure enough, they just did. Uh, we just passed one unit that was waiting there. He just turned on a McClay. So he's turning on to McClay from S Foothill. And it looks like this is his opportunity to get back on the 210 freeway. So it does appear that he's going to go back eastbound on the 210. Yeah, very big circle. It appears that this is an area that he is perhaps familiar with, considering that this is where the pursuit began. It began on Paxton, and Paxton is the street that is just south of the 118 freeway. It runs parallel to it. So he's staying for the most part in this area of the 118, 210 freeway in the uh, Pacoima and Silmar areas. And if he stays in these lanes, he will be forced to go westbound on the 118 freeway. And it appears that uh, he is, in fact, going to be going westbound 118. I have not seen any uh, CHP units uh, join the pursuit just yet, but I can only imagine that the request has been put in considering that this pursuit for the most part has now been on the freeways only. And uh, when I zoomed in on that unit, I was able to read that it is in fact still LAPD that is right behind this guy. It's the LAPD airship that is overhead, a pursuit that started in LAPD's foothill division. And at this point, it appears that it is in fact going to be LAPD that is gonna be sticking with with it at least uh, for the next few minutes uh, while CHP gets out here. But for the most part, uh, LAPD continuing here on the uh, 118 freeway, still in the Pacoima area. Yeah, let me, let me widen out so that we can uh, count them together because I haven't had a chance to count, but I'm seeing, uh, just like you are, about four units from the LAPD as well as the airship overhead. So if they decide to go into surveillance mode, as I uh, did hear a little chatter about that on the scanner, they will ask those units to back off a little bit, give the suspect a little bit of room so that he feels that he's not being pressured and doesn't drive so quickly and erratically. But the airship's going to stay on this regardless as he continues here westbound 118 freeway. We're going to be coming up to the five here in a moment, so we'll see if he decides to hop on another freeway. But it looks like he's going to continue 118 away from the five. So this started in the Palmdale area then and made its way down uh, to Pacoima. That's quite the distance. But for the most part, it seems like the suspect is staying in the Pacoima area. We haven't seen him head north uh, towards uh, Palmdale, but that's very much a possibility. It's, as Chuck was saying, suspects tend to, and, and other pursuits that we've covered, we've realized that suspects tend to return to an area that is familiar to them. And there's a couple reasons for it. Well, one, they won't drive themselves into a dead end. And two, 
two, if they happen to live in the area, they could abandon the vehicle, take off running, and, and, and hide inside of a residence. Those are always uh, possibilities. We, of course, don't know that this is what, what's going to happen in this particular situation, uh, but just uh, something to keep in the back of our minds as he continues here uh, in uh, roughly the same area. But now he's all the way to the 405 freeway, so he's still on that westbound 118, but has now made it as far west as the 405. fairly constant 75 is the number that i keep repeating and uh so far it seems like that's kind of where he feels comfortable currently traveling at about 75 miles an hour for the most part it seems like he's not really preferential to any lane he will use whatever lane he needs to to get by we've seen him on the 118 freeway we've seen him on the 5 the 405 210 and now uh, yet again on the 118 freeway on the westbound uh, side so he's uh, approaching the area of granada hills if he continues in this general direction he will get over to porter ranch and eventually the 118 does come to an end at the 23 but that's a uh, quite a distance away but for now uh about 75 miles an hour here on the westbound 118. And that's always something that officers have to be worried about, even if whether or not they know that the suspect is armed, they have to treat him as if he is, just in case, because you never know. And the, another thing that they'll also be cautious about is the number of people that are in the vehicle. Of course they know that there is the driver, but they don't know if somebody could perhaps be hiding in the back seat or the, that he could have a passenger. In this case, we obviously don't have a trunk, so that's some, uh, something that they won't have to contend with. But they, when this pursuit comes to a stop, and it will eventually, that is when uh, they will, uh, of course, ask the driver to exit the vehicle and at that point they will make a call out to any additional passengers if there is any and uh, it is at that point uh, that we can that they can finally uh, feel comfortable about the situation but for now he's actually starting to pick up speeds about uh, 82 miles an hour here on the westbound 118 coming up to Porter Ranch. Not uh, soon, at least uh, not uh, not until he gets to the 23, till the 23 freeway, rather. That's going to be the nearest uh, transitioning freeway. Right now, he's in Porter Ranch on the 118. Uh, the nearest exit is going to be, I believe, Reseda Boulevard, if I'm not mistaken. So he's still in the Porter Ranch area. He may have been trying to exit there and just didn't see the opportunity for it. But he is uh, continuing here westbound through Reseda with uh, the units not particularly super close behind him. You can see the, the proximity there. Uh, it's not right on his tail, but they're still keeping close tabs with the airship and its night sun uh, shining on this stolen vehicle suspect. been able to determine exactly what it is but it does appear to be a stick of some sort perhaps a rake or something of that nature I'm, I'm putting the night the, our night vision on to see if that would help but it really doesn't I still can't uh, see exactly what is back there but definitely something with some type of handle and you may actually be exiting here at Porter Ranch Drive so exiting the one the 118 westbound at Porter Ranch But they, of course, had to check. Yeah, sorry about that. Check out. Uh, he's a traveling at about 45 miles an hour here on Porter Ranch Drive, making a turn there onto Rinaldi, which runs adjacent to the 118 freeway just on the north side. So he's going east.
inbound Rinaldi from Porter Ranch. So essentially, he's going back in the direction that he just came, but this time on surface streets instead of on that 118 freeway. I would definitely call it tracking mode at this point. I, I heard them talk about that a couple times on the scanner, and that would explain why we are no longer seeing the night sun from the police helicopter. They essentially want the suspect to think that he is no longer being pursued. And by doing that, he'll hopefully slow his roll down a little bit, perhaps even park the car, get out. And at that point, units that are still going to be close by, nonetheless, would be able to swoop in and take that suspect into custody. Rinaldi at Tampa is what he's going through here. Here. He he just uh, ran through that yellow light, uh, taking that center lane at approximately 57 miles an hour. It's hit and miss. Uh, we have seen some pursuits where it is extremely effective. The suspect will slow down significantly. He'll start obeying the rules of the of the law of the road, stopping at red lights, stopping at stop signs. But it doesn't always work. We've we've seen it go both ways. Sometimes the suspect sees that it's his opportunity to just take off. Uh, in this case, it's a. Uh, it seems to be working. He is slowing down his speeds just a touch. We'll see what he does when he comes up to the next light, whether or not he stops, if he has a red or a stop sign. But at least in terms of speeds, he has slowed down a little bit compared to what he was traveling at when he was on the freeway. They rarely get away. The percentage is extremely low. Uh, most pursuits that we've covered, I can tell you that the suspects are taken into custody. And uh, in this case, the suspect, though, he's going to test his luck. He wants to see if he won't, if he's going to be able to get away as he made that turn there onto Reseda, coming over the 118 freeway. So this may be his chance to get back on that 118. And sure enough, going to be going back on the 118 freeway. It appears that he's going eastbound, so back in the direction that he came, back towards Pacoima, if that's his uh, destination, and uh, now uh, entering the freeway here, eastbound 118. Yeah, he uh, he went as far as Porter Ranch, but now he's turning back around. So he may be heading back to where this pursuit began. It started again off of Paxton and Laurel Canyon. Paxton is very close to that 118 freeway, so he very well may be heading back th into the direction that he came. But of course, as, as Colleen mentioned, we now know that this vehicle was stolen out of Palmdale. So if that's his uh, destination, then he is going back in that right direction because he could uh, pick up that northbound 5 or even the uh, northbound 14 uh, but for now continuing here westbound on or, I'm sorry eastbound 118 freeway at approximately 75 miles an hour in that center lane The next one coming up is Balboa. He's uh, going to be approaching it here in just a moment. And uh, we're catching up here. He's a little ahead of us here. But coming up to Balboa. But in terms of freeways, the next freeway coming up will be the 405 freeway. And he has been on that one before. So he's uh, not afraid to take that if need be. Uh, the 405 is going to come up first. And then the 5 freeway will come up after that. After that, we see the 210 freeway, and he's been on all of those. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see when he comes up to each one of those what he decides to do. But for now, eastbound 118 here uh, in uh, the Granada Hills area. Absolutely. At this point, he could think that he made a right turn somewhere where he lost the cops and now they are nowhere in sight. This is what he's seeing. Absolutely no one behind him. He doesn't have the night sun shining down on him, so he's not seeing that. He obviously can't hear the helicopters either. Uh, 
since he's driving on the road. So at this point, this suspect could very well think that he is scot-free, that he has gotten away. But we know the truth. We know that he hasn't. He's still continuing here on the eastbound 118, coming up to the 405. But in terms of speeds, he's still going relatively uh, at the same speeds that he was going at before, approximately 75 miles an hour, sticking to that fast lane. The advantage is really to protect the public more than anything by having him slow down his speeds to something that's at least a little safer and having him not run red lights, having him not run stop signs, that lessens the danger level of this situation. So that's going to endanger less people who are on the road. They still have eyes on him. They're going to keep units relatively in the area. So they're going to be ready to swoop in when the situation uh, calls for it. But they simply want to lessen the level of danger. And he's putting on his brakes here. So let's see what he does. He does appear to be, oh, there we go. There was a little bit of uh, construction there off to the side of the road and is now transitioning onto the southbound 5 freeway away from the 118. Uh, so this is going to be, uh, I would call it Pacoima. So I'd call it Pacoima on, uh, on the right side of the freeway. And then we have our Lita on the other side of the freeway. So again, this is the area where this began. I c I'm actually looking out the window and I can see the exact intersection where this pursuit began at Laurel Canyon and Paxton in Pacoima. So he's back in that same area. So it's kind of the thought process that we were thinking before. Suspects tend to return to an area that is familiar to them. And this suspect seems to be doing exactly that as he continues here southbound on the 5 freeway coming up to Terrabelle. Bella. Exactly. And by being being in an area that is familiar to him, he may know a good spot to ditch the car, perhaps a street that's really dark, somewhere where he can run in, even perhaps a home that he can run into or an apartment complex or, or parking structure. So we don't know exactly what this suspect is thinking, but you can see him putting on his taillights right there. He may be exiting here at Osborne, sure enough, exiting on Osborne from the 5 freeway. He's going to have the option to go left or right here at the off-ramp, and we'll see what he does as he comes to the end of it and appears to be setting up to go to the right. Sure enough, going to be going westbound on Osborne. Yeah, and we haven't heard of whether or not there was a low jack on it, but if the suspect made the mistake of leaving the plates on the vehicle, the rightful plates, then LAPD officers could have run those plates and have seen that that car came back as a stolen. And uh, what we heard was that uh, they they somehow were able to figure out that the car was in fact stolen. They tried to pull him over, and that's when the pursuit was on. Yes, he's in a residential area just to the west of the 5 freeway. And now you see those units close behind. So they are re-engaging here uh, on our Lita. And you see that that, uh, that police vehicle is now close behind. And there you go. The airship now has its light back on. So this pursuit is now no longer in tracking mode. Back on as a full-blown pursuit here in our Lita. My guess would be, be he slowed down enough and he started to kind of creep into this residential area. So it seemed from my vantage point that he was re getting ready to ditch the car. So they wanted to be ready. They wanted to be in the area, ready to take the suspect into custody if he decided to run away from the vehicle. But once he saw them, that's when he decided, never mind, I'm going to keep it going. And that's why he is now uh, 
continuing the pursuit here on our Alita with a cross of Van Nuys, but maybe slowing down here just a touch. It's unclear why. I think he was just clearing the intersection there because he did have the red light, but on our on our Alita rather with a cross of Van Nuys. For safety reasons, they would most likely keep their lights on just so that other vehicles in the area could see that they are coming through, especially if they're going to be running red lights and running stop signs. You wouldn't want to put anybody else in danger in this type of situation because as much as the LAPD wants to take this suspect into custody, what is most important to them is making sure that the rest of the citizens are safe. So that's exactly what they would do. Here we go. And he's running for it. Hop the fence there. <laughs> yeah, there's a German Shepherd there, so he's not going to try it there, but he's still right there in that carport. He's on Barty Avenue with a cross of Fillmore, right there under that palm tree. That's where I'm still seeing him. Looks like he's a little out of breath there. He's hoping to hide there, but you can see the night sun is still shining on this suspect. LAPD knows very well where this suspect is located. And there are the LAPD officers from the Foothill Division coming up to the suspect on Barty Avenue. He, d he realized he had nowhere to run, put his hands up, and is now giving up. But unfortunately, it does appear that that gate is closed. So they're going to have a little bit of a difficult uh, access situation getting to that suspect. He's just on the other side of that white fence on Barty Avenue with a cross of Fillmore, a male suspect, the only person we saw get out of that suspect vehicle when this pursuit came to a stop in that cul-de-sac. They've Yeah, it looks like that officer is uh, the chosen one who's going to jump over the fence here to get that suspect into custody, put some handcuffs on him. And you see that other officer also going to be uh, joining him here in a moment to uh, try to apprehend this person. They simply just can't unlock that gate. So they're going to be uh, making contact here within uh, the next couple of seconds with this suspect. He does not appear to be resisting in any way, and uh, he will be put in handcuffs here in just a moment. Stopping car chases happening across Southern California. Subscribe here. Thanks for watching. The chase is on.